Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Everybody, everybody is doing well. Sorry about that. Uh, tired. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody had a great uh, day of trading, guys. Be uh, nice to the channel. Support your guy. Uh, click a like. Again, show your support. Uh, all it takes is one second, and hopefully I'll continue to uh, provide value. So let's talk about the tape. So uh, euphoria continued yesterday uh, ever since the, the Trump um, quote-unquote re-election, right? Um, Tesla going nuts, Bitcoin going nuts. Bitcoin uh, honestly went to 90,000, right? 90,000 uh, this afternoon, uh, you know, still going very, very strong. Uh, Tesla had, you know, kind of the, one of the most euphoric moves uh, that we can remember in a very, very long time. We'll get to that in a second. Again, we kind of covered last night uh, what it needed for, for a potential back test. We kind of got that today. Again, we'll talk about that uh, in a second. But starting from, uh, you know, starting from, uh, the indexes. Let's start off with the Dow. So the Dow today was down roughly about 400 points. And here is kind of the point where we were making, at least I was making, uh, on Tesla for the last several days. When when you have such a an egregious move, right? You have such an aggressive move and you're buying it into no man's land. You, you don't have a safety net. You don't have any course of support. All you do is you can hope and wish and pray that your stock or underlining uh, asset class continues to go higher. And here is a perfect example of, you know, the Dow just finally getting tired, right? And again, we'll segue uh, to Tesla in a second. The Dow getting tired and you saw a very, very aggressive pullback. We talked about this on the Tesla side. Don't look for a back test until it takes out the previous day's channel. Well, that's exactly what happened to the diamonds today. Uh, it took out the previous day's low uh, full 4180s and traded all the way back to the five-day moving average. Again, that's the common goal. Uh, the common goal is to see and not to guess uh, where a stock is going to tap out or try to anticipate a backside move. The goal and the want and the need is let the market dictate, right? Let the market show its hand and show it through price action instead of anticipating. Uh, the SPY today, uh, kind of a flat day in a weird way. It had a very aggressive pull the same way uh, as the diamonds. Uh, it lost the previous day's channel and traded to the five day moving average. You see that, you see the, you, you see the similarities, right? Losing the previous day's channel and retesting the five day support, right? Well, look at uh, the QQQs. They did exactly the same that as well, right? So you had the Dow, the S&P, uh, and the NASDAQ, all three indexes, losing its previous day's lows and testing the rising five-day support. Now, why is that an important thing, right? If you're brand new to, to this broadcast, the five-day moving average, at least to me, is a very, very important barometer because it shows uh, short-term sentiment. Who has control of short-term sentiment, giving us a short-term lied in the sand. So for example, now that we know that the Qs successfully tested the bottom of the channel here on the rising five day, the 509.83 becomes kind of a, a, a short term, right? A short term line in the sand. So if there is one more day of selling. And again, today they did a great job of supporting that five day. But if the sellers take control of 509.80s, then yeah, you're going down uh, all the way down to this 506, 504 level. So again, understanding your levels is super duper important. And the line in the sand in the next couple of days for the Qs and pretty much everything else uh, associated with them is this 509, uh, 83. Now, why is that important? Let's just segue to some names, right? Let's segue to some names and then we'll get to Tesla in a second. If you guys remember yesterday, we had a discussion on the video and you can see how a lot of these names tested their five-day moving average. You guys remember last night's video? We talked about Amazon. We talked about Google. We talked about Meta. We talked about NVIDIA. All, we talked about Amazon. All these stocks yesterday tested the five-day moving average and bounced. And the question going into today's session was, well, were they going to lose their five-day moving average that they tested yesterday? Or is there going to be rotation? What I mean by rotation is it 
Is it going to be money coming out of a name, for example, like a Tesla and going back into an NVIDIA, going back into an Amazon? Hell, even going back into a name like Meta and Microsoft that had less than stellar um, reactions to their earnings, but that was very, very important. That's exactly how our organic bull scenario works. And we got our answer pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, this morning, uh, Tesla did exactly what we talked about in last night's video. Right? Remember guys, I said, don't anticipate. If, if, it, if it's going to start a back test, right? If it's going to start a, a scenario that there is profit taking into the five-day moving average, like we just saw with the Qs, with the spies, and several other uh, individual assets, it's going to need to lose the previous day's lows. That's exactly what happened. Tesla today uh, lost its previous day's low of 336. Well, why is that important? Begin again, if you believe in the whole, uh, and first of all, it was a great pivot. Congratulations for all you guys uh, in the webinar who caught it today. Beautiful move. It was a 13 point move uh, to the downside. Uh, but the point is, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, and you see the visual evidence how stocks need to back test the five day moving average, like we just showed you on several cases. Well, watch Tesla for tomorrow, guys. If it can lose, and this is kind of a two-sided trade, if it can lose today's lows, right? If it can lose today's lows, then it should get down to the five-day moving average. If you're an experienced trader and you want to try to capture both sides of the trade, well, the most aggressive part is shorting it below today's channel and covering it into the five-day moving average and then going long, right? That's an experienced, experienced trader. Uh, don't try this at home if you are a brand new trader because you have to really understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why the price actually matters at those levels. But if you are an experienced trader, I would love to see us getting opportunity tomorrow for a loss of today's channel, right? Loss of today's channel, uh, shorting it into the five-day moving average, covering into the five-day moving average, and bouncing it off the orange line, just like we saw with NVIDIA, Amazon, the Qs, uh, the spies and the diamonds uh, in earlier examples. Uh, Amazon, again, the money rotated back into the other mega cap spaces, right? Look at Amazon, okay? Uh, Amazon, like yesterday, tested the five-day moving average and bounced. Uh, after the close, uh, it was filed that uh, Bezos sold like another billion, billion and a half dollars uh, worth, of, uh, worth of stock. There's speculation after the close that he's almost done. If you look at the spike after the close, right? If you look at the spike after the close, uh, it's kind of speculation that he is almost done. Guys, watch these three days for tomorrow, right? Watch these three channels for tomorrow. As you can see here, it's uh, a high, lower high, lower high. If tomorrow we can get back above the channel from three days ago, maybe Amazon wakes up. And if there is any type of um, legs behind him possibly being done with selling stock. Maybe this thing goes back to earnings high. So it's definitely a name uh, you want to watch. Uh, Meta. Meta gave us a great pivot today. Really, really good pivot today. Again, same example as we talked about. Stocks need to re successfully test, defend their five-day moving average and bounce. We caught a beautiful, beautiful pivot today on, on Meta. The only problem is it got rejected right at the top of the range. But again, a name we definitely uh, have to continue uh, to watch, right? Very, very impressive, but uh, definitely a name we have to watch in the next several days. Google, right? Look at Google, guys. Remember we were saying Google is getting very, very tight? Well, Google is getting very, very tight. Again, keep on watching this thing. If the market has any type of legs, uh, and it gets back above this upper Bollinger Band, Google can start waking up. Again, very, very important to understand the stocks that are getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Eventually, we'll have an expansion cycle with everything else. Very, very important to understand. Uh, we talked about yesterday uh, Square. You guys remember we talked about Square, right? Square, we talked about. If you could just get back above this linear regression line, you can have a day two. Well, again, massive, massive move. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's go to uh, today's pivot. So we have to kind of reiterate the whole thing. So Google today uh, was a little bit, of, it was a little bit tough, a little bit tough. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we got along Google. Uh, it went up about 60, 70 cents. And what was good about Google today is it was, it was actually holding fairly strong as the NASDAQ was pulling in. And then finally, it obviously gave up. But we started seeing a lot of really heavy call buying coming in. Uh, again, the 185s, the 190s. Uh, we even saw 
Uh, we even saw the December and January 200 calls coming into Google. Again, it's getting super, super tight, guys. We just want to see all these stocks in uniform get strong at the same time. And I think if that's the case in the next day or so, maybe Google will finally have that expansion earnings high uh, channel. Uh, Meta gave us a great trade, great, great trade today. Uh, 587, 588 is the pre-market highs. Uh, I bought it on the opening range highs of 592. It went to almost 600. It was a great, great trade. Absolutely great trade. Uh, Square gave an awesome move. Actually closed pretty much at the highs. Uh, 84 needs to confirm. It traded it to up to 87 and change pretty much uh, at the close. Affirm didn't give us that bounce. Uh, and it also didn't confirm the natural pivot. But guys, watch Affirm uh, for the next couple of days. It had a big, big move, right? It had a big, big move yesterday. Rest of today, inside day, that's super bullish, super healthy. That means the sellers are comfortable at this level. If it could finally confirm the highs from yesterday, uh, a firm can start reclaiming uh, higher uh, prices. Uh, Snow gave a nice move today. Nice move, not a huge move, but a nice move. And the reason why I say that is uh, 125 needs to build on Snow. So Snow gave a $2 move right at the open, right? $2 move right at the open. We talked about Snow last night. From 25 to 27. Like, why is 27 important? That was also the high of October. So it got rejected right back to 27. Again, there's no room to debate here. It needs to get above 27, right? You see that, guys? It got rejected at 127 on the October 11th highs. Got rejected today at the one uh, at the 127 October 11 highs. It's the same price, right? All it needs to do, if it could get back above the 127 area and stay there, Snow should start pushing into this 30, uh, 30 and a half supply. And here is this, the two sided trade on Tesla. Uh, yesterday's low was at two. It was at 336. That was the pivot to the downside. Uh, in the afternoon, um, in the afternoon, and the stock got smoked. It got really smoked. Went from three thirty six uh, all the way down to uh, two twenty three. So big, big move uh, down on Tesla. Uh, Nvidia gave a nice little pop again. It's almost ready, right? It's almost ready, uh, guys. I tell you, I've seen some massive options flow uh, in the last couple of months, but we saw today. I'm t- again. I get it. They're 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 positioning ahead of earnings that are in eight days on NVIDIA. But those call buyers that came in, guys, they were coming in for the 150 weeklies, the 152 and a half weeklies, 155 weeklies, Decembers. They were piling on the Decembers, 160 calls, seven figure bets, like it was getting out of style. So there is a lot of heavy institutional money flow uh, coming into NVIDIA today. Uh, it gave one out of the two uh, necessary areas of NVIDIA, 149 and 149.8 area needs to build. It took out 49. I uh, traded up to 49.70s. That's where it got rejected. So we, we really need uh, this thing to get back above 150 for a push. And here's kind of my last matches for you guys who are uh, holding the runner off the 335 uh, short on uh, Tesla. Cover the last piece, 315, 316 at the five day. Uh, that five day is going to go up tomorrow. So it's a different number, but beautiful short, beautiful, beautiful short on uh, Tesla. And I believe that is it. So for tomorrow, uh, obviously, I'd like to see a washout. Um, I would like to see a washout on uh, Tesla. Again, we talked about a potential uh, two-sided trade. I want to see if NVIDIA can start getting back above that 150 level. I'd like to see if Google can start expanding off the earnings uh, highs, and but most important is I want to see market structure. The last thing we want to see when, when the market sometimes rests on big levels, the last thing we want to see is the Christmas tree effect. What I mean by that is some of the beta names are green, some of the beta names are red. We want them to be all uniform, right? We want them to be all uniform. We want them to be all going in the same direction, whether it's up, down, or sideways. We want them to all go in the same direction. One last name, guys, definitely keep an eye on for the next couple of days is Microsoft. Yesterday, it shook off. Actually, today, it shook off a downgrade. You see how tight this channel is, right? It's It's got rejected off the top of the range here in the daily and held the bottom. Something has to give here. But if, assuming if the market is strong, and I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, if Microsoft could just get back above last week's channel, this thing could start opening up. So definitely, we have a lot of really good uh, juicy setups uh, for tomorrow. The question is, what is going to confirm? Guys, have a great night, everybody. 
God bless. If you are interested in Pivots, guys, all you got to do is click the link below, test drive the webinar for 30 days. Worst case scenario, you'll never look at the market the same. Guys, God bless. I will see you all in the field tomorrow.